So what are the rules for 529 plan? Let's say you just had your first child. Congratulations. If you can afford it, you should start a 529 with your kid as the beneficiary right then and there. Well, maybe wait a couple of days after all you just had a baby. Although, as anyone who's read Confessions of a Street Addict knows, I traded big blocks of Alcoa throughout the birthing. Admittedly, not my finest hour, somewhat ill-advised. Although the trades only worked out financially, if not familiarly. Here's how 529 works. The contributions are not tax deductible, so you're paying for this with after-tax income. But, and here's the good part, once your money is in the 529 plan, you don't pay any taxes on your gains, so they can compound tax-free year after year. Really, it's a lot like a Roth IRA, except for college rather than retirement. Because of federal gift tax laws, you can contribute $15,000 a year if you're single, $30,000 if you're married, and you file your taxes jointly. That's a heck of a lot of money. Oh, and by the way, your children's grandparents can contribute to the same 529 plan, too. And if you don't have the money, a grandparent can also start a 529 with your kid as a beneficiary. Although for financial aid reasons, it's better to have a parent do it. Now, let's say for some reason you are you, you or your parents are sitting on a really huge sum of money. One of the cool things about a 529 plan is that you can front load five years worth of contributions without incurring the federal gift tax as long as you don't write any checks to the plan's beneficiary over the next five years. In other words, a single parent or grandparent could potentially invest $75,000 into a 529 right from the start. Or if you're married and filing jointly, you can contribute $150,000. For the next five years after that, you won't be able to contribute anything without getting hit by that gift tax, which is something you don't want. But honestly, once you've dropped that kind of money into a 529, you won't need to make too many, too many contrib- more contributions. The key here, though, is that you want to get that money into your kid's 529 as early as possible. That's because the greatness of these plans is all about the power of compounding. Given that you don't pay taxes within the 529, if you can somehow contrive to contribute $75,000 right off the bat, and you invest that money in a low-cost index fund that I'm advising that mirrors the market, the rule of thumb is that over time, you'll make an average of roughly 7% per year. I know the stock market is a lot more volatile than that, Uh, But just as a thought experiment, if stocks generally perform like they have historically, you could double your investment in about nine years. So if you start savings right now when your kid is born, by the time he or she is 18, the value of your 529 plan will have doubled and doubled again. If you started with 75,000, then after 18 years, barring some kind of catastrophe, you could have as much as $300,000. That's enough for a fancy, expensive private college education and a decent chunk of law school to boot. Although if they don't hold back the price of tuition, it won't even cover the four years. But you got to start somewhere. I know that most people can't front load a 529 like this, especially not with all the expense that comes with raising a child. But it's worth keeping in mind that front-loading as much as possible is indeed the best strategy. Oh, and for grandparents, this may sound kind of grim, but your 529 plan contributions won't count towards your estate tax. Hey, to borrow a line from the life of Brian, always look on the bright side of death. Last thing about saving for college and grad school, any money in a 529 plan that you don't use, you can transfer to another relative. We're talking siblings, parents, even first cousins. Oh, and if you save all this money and your ungrateful kid decides not to go to college, you can just withdraw the money from the 529 plan. But in that case, you'll have to pay taxes on any of your gains along with a 10% penalty. So here's the bottom line. No, paying for your kid's college education isn't as important, at least financially, as providing for yourself in retirement. But if you have children, then after you've made enough money, enough retirement contributions for the year, if you've made those contributions, putting money in a 529 college savings plan should be the next item on your agenda. It's the best way to protect your kids from the crushing burden of student loan debt. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.